As fans will know, we've created many tall tales in Sea of Thieves before. And I think what's unique about Monkey Island and that world is just that sense of really inhabiting those locations. I think what's wonderful about Maile Island is how unique it feels. A little bit dangerous, but it's also feels a little bit homely. And you have the kind of safe lights of the town, but then you have this deep forest. And standing on the island lookout and just staring across this sea of pine trees. You've never seen pine trees in Sea of Thieves before. And that sense of being lost in the woods at night and hearing the elves and just that atmosphere. This density of forest that we've wanted to achieve in the past, but we didn't quite have the resources or, you know, opportunity to do so. So we've really, you know, increased that density and pushed it beyond the limits we're used to. It's just got this completely unique feel where one minute you're exploring in the woods and then you come across a big top circus tent in the middle of this clearing. And it it feels so right in Sea of Thieves, but it's also something you've never seen before. I worked really closely with Joachim Copens, who was the artist on that. He did the tent building and the layout. I was able to use that and the lighting together to really create this spot of colour that's in this blue forest. And just it just acts like a beacon that calls players to it. It's just a really dynamic scene. It's atmospheric and, you re and the way the light hits the trees from the tent, it just embeds itself into the environment. When you think of a circus, you think of the da, 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 and it does draw from that kind of influence. So you can go, oh yeah, that is definitely the circus tent. So that was really interesting listening to that piece before working on it. You're doing a trial where you're constantly trying to get it right. You're going to be reiterating that trial a lot of times until you actually pass. So you're going to be so long in there. You don't want to hear the same one minute 30 looping round and round. It's going to absolutely do your head in. And so the way around it was using that track and just bringing in different instrumentation. So whenever it comes around, there's some randomization. So maybe a different uh, instrument is taking the lead and a different layer is popping at different times. So there's always going to be some differences every time the loop comes back around. When you step into the circus, you can the music starts, you can hear the brothers arguing. There's a subtle fire of the flames, like the flaming hoops going. All of those kinds of extra little details that weren't in the original games. We've really wanted to bring that to life in this experience. Fettuccini, brothers! That's us! There's a whole bunch of mechanics that we're doing for the first time as part of these tales. It was impossible not to put zip lines in there with a, with a rubber chicken with a pulley, so we have that in there. Of course, something as iconic as insult sword fighting. I've met pigs that are scarier than you. Now, bringing something that fans will expect from Monkey Island to Sea of Thieves, but in a way that it just enriches their sword play and it adds that puzzle-solving element to collecting the insults and choosing the right one in the right context. That's been a real fun experience to bring that to life. Avenge me, mateys! It seems you're just naturally insulting. The characters in Monkey Island are very different to the characters from Sea of Thieves. They're a lot more kind of cheeky, their humour's a bit more irreverent. People like Stan, you know, it's very exaggerated humour. He is a used car salesman, but within a pirate game, it's absolutely absurd. Stan is, is such a huge character that was probably the, the trickiest character to bring through, down to interpreting his hat, how that worked. Is it a big Texas uh, gallon hat? But it's also a pirate hat, so figuring that out. The effect on his jacket, which is, is very like an iconic feature. The technical aspect of him, like the specific material on the jacket that was a really difficult thing to nail like we went through a different iteration of the look uh, because of course making it completely flat and faithful to the original was difficult for Sea of Thieves and was completely out of the style but I think yeah the technical team like did a great job and I think during that process we realized that a lot of Stan really came down to his expressions that's what he's known for so once we added all those animations it was really really started all coming together he's quite a different character to anything that we have in Sea of Thieves and quite different to the other Monkey Island characters when he's talking he he gestures his arms about all over the place in the original game 
And we wanted to try and stick to that as much as possible. So we had our makeup actor come in, do do all of those um, gestures. And we actually had the animator then speed it up by like double the speed. And we found out quite quickly that that wasn't going to work as well as we had hoped to fit in with the Sea of Thieves style. So um, we had to kind of take a step back, think again. And eventually we came across this middle ground of having him not gesture as much, but gesture to the beats of his dialogue, which actually worked really, really nicely in the end. Trust me, I want you to leave here happy. Why not start by taking a look around? You know, I think one of the hallmarks of the Monkey Island series of games has always been just absolutely spectacular voice acting. Going back to the days when that wasn't very common. You know, I think that's much more common nowadays. It's something that uh, that I think gamers want and expect. We've been doing this for 33 years and you're still as clueless as ever. The collection of actors who have been portraying these characters over the years, you know, they're pros. They know what they're doing. And and, and it's, this is the kind of game where you get to have fun. I mean, this is the game where you get to just play these goofy, wild, unusual characters. And you got to get, get to cut loose and be creative and have fun with it. Your timing ooh, could not be better. And when you have, you know, great character actors who are doing fun work like that, how can that not be enjoyable to listen to? I mean, it just, it comes off the screen. What do you want? I think the thing I'm looking forward to most is just seeing players' reactions to exploring these new environments uh, for the first time. It's going to be amazing for players that have the nostalgia for the original games, but they're also just beautiful environments for players that have no idea what Monkey Island is to explore. And I'm just so proud of all the hard work that the team's put into this experience. The people who have, have written this know and love this universe the same way we do, and for me, myself, I just want more. I'm just insatiable. I, I, I can't, I, you know, every single time I, we finish one of these projects, like, okay, well, I guess that's it. You know, we'll move on. And I just, I can't, I, I keep, can't wait for the next version to come back. I want it to never go away. So the more the better as far as I'm concerned. Once players get to experience this for themselves, I think it's going to be fantastic just seeing all the different stories that emerge and the way that people, you know, find these characters and get to interact and have these huge adventures within both the Monkey Island world, but also Sea of Thieves. 